Hello again. Um, just want to drop in and say hi and uh, do a short little video or attempt. Thought will be short anyway. Um, sorry I haven't been making videos as much as I would like. Uh, I had my daughter, or my wife had our daughter three weeks ago tomorrow. So it's been a little hectic at the house. But I uh, just want to drop in and say hi. A few topics for today's video. I um, just want to flip, flip the camera around here in a second and show you what I got the other day. So those are the old tires off my truck. I put uh, new to me rubber on it. And... Uh, this come into the shop the other day. This bar and chain is off of the 1010 Auto. But uh, it's a Craftsman, a.k.a. Poland 5.4. Uh, it runs good. Uh, he brought it in. It's had been sitting a very long time. I uh, wanted to know about what it would cost to fix. And I said, well, it's probably going to need fuel lines and a carb kit. If it's got spark, I checked for spark. It had spark, so uh, he decided he didn't want to spend the uh, money to fix it. He would rather just buy something new. And he asked if I wanted it, and I said, yeah, I'll get it running. So I brought it home and uh, put fuel lines and a new filter in it. And it thankfully had been stored dry, so the carb was okay. Um, I've put about three tanks of fuel on it now, and the carb is settled into a tune. And, uh, it's a pretty decent little runner. It had an 18-inch Oregon bar on it, and the chain was shot. Um, so I put that 20 on it just to run it. And it's all right. Uh, it's not as powerful as my 1010 Auto, I can tell you that. Because um, I had that uh, that chain sharpened up right before I took it off the 1010 Auto and had the rakers. Uh, probably 30 thousandths. And that sod uh, doesn't... Uh, not that it won't pull it, but if you lean on it much, it, it clutches out. Um, next topic, uh, my 610, I put that 24 inch bar on it, like I said I was going to do, and compare it to the, uh, 266, I actually have two, well I had two 266s, I sold my XP, and I kept my SE, and, uh, I sold it to the shop I work at, and the shop I work at sold it last week, so... It didn't stick around long, but it was in really nice shape. I uh, probably should have kept it, but I've got too many. So, um, at some point, I'm going to dig that 266 SE back out of storage and uh, put a 24 on it and compare it to my 610. But uh, my 610, holy cow, uh, it's been one of my staples. The last two years for a saw it's been reliable as heck other than that recoil exploding um it pulls uh, excuse me pulls a 24 just fine it's not lacking in power with the 24 um you do notice when the chain gets dull but uh you notice on a 266 also when you have a dull chain <laughs> But it's, you know, it's a little heavier than a 266. Um, but the anti-vibe is better than a 266. It's a little smoother. Um, so the question being, do you want more vibrations and maybe, maybe a little more power? And that's a big maybe. Um is if it's got more power, it's not by much. Um, 
my 266 SE is probably not going to be a very fair comparison uh, because I did a, as you guys know, when I got it, the piston was scored. The cylinder was salvageable, but the piston was shot. And when I put a new piston in it, I did a base gasket delete, and it's got a lot of compression. Um, not that that 610 doesn't, but it's not like that SE I've got. That SE has got probably 190 pounds of compression. Uh, it's kind of stupid, to be honest. I should probably put a base gasket back in it or uh, just go ahead and port it. Next thing. I put the 32-inch uh, bar on my 298 and had a chance to run that. That's a stout freaking saw. Holy cow. I run it just long enough to get it good and warm right in that operating temperature range. And as soon as I did, I could tell that saw has been sitting a very long time. You know, uh, two-stroke or four-stroke. After something sits for a while and you get it running again and it gets right up to operating temperature and it smells like uh, burnt walnuts, we'll say, is what I would compare it to. That's what it smelled like. It's been sitting a long time and I'm, I'm running it, you know, just like I do at anything else, 40 to 1 with uh, a really good quality oil that I've had a lot of luck with. And... Uh, I have yet to have a soft failure um, myself, but when I have had my saws apart after running that oil, they seem to be well oiled. And any more good oil is good oil. There's no such, not that there's not subpar quality oils, but there's, uh, as long as it's a decent quality two-stroke oil you're probably not going to have a lack of oil unless you're running a super thin mix i wouldn't run anything thinner than 50 to 1 myself um i've ran 50, 50 to 1 i ran 50 to 1 for a long time it seems to be sufficient there's nothing wrong with 50 to 1 it's just the oil I get now, I get it in a convenient container that's enough for 40 to 1 at 5 gallons. So I just get 5 gallons of fuel at a time and dump a container in. Um, I also, uh, like I said, I did a little cutting this weekend with my 298. And I took that Craftsman 5.4. And I also took my 450 Rancher. Uh, this little guy will grab it and sit it out here in the sun. It's got a 445 recoil on it because I, I blew up the original recoil. I still have it. I just have to rebuild it. Um, you know, for, for being a, we'll call, Lowe's saw, these aren't all that bad. This is what I would start to consider a, a decent saw. They're... They're pretty rugged little guys. Uh, I got this for five dollars several years ago. It needed a tank. I put a new OEM tank on it, and I've yet to have an issue with it since. <laughs> I put an air filter in it last year. I haven't really run it much this year. I've ran probably three tanks of fuel through it this year, just because I've had other saws to run. Uh, but I got it back out of storage. A while back, along with that little pole and top handle that I need to take out cutting sometime soon. And, uh, it's good. I mean, it's it's not, like, gobstopping in the power department. But it's got enough. I got a 16 on it. And I use it for my brush saw. You know, I'll drop a tree with one of the bigger saws and then uh, I'll limb or take brush out of the way with that 450 no sense in burning saw gas in a big saw when you got lots of trees to drop and you have smaller saws that get a lot farther on a tank of gas 
you know not necessarily in the same wood but um they run for a longer amount of time as long as you're not burying them in huge wood you know like obviously i'm not going to take that 450 rancher and cut 32 inch wood with it i'm not going to do it i'm going to take either the the 610 the 298 or the 395 to cut bigger wood like that and generally speaking if it's not 30 inch wood i'm not running that 298 or the 395 especially the 298 unless i feel like running it like i did this weekend because i really didn't need it for more than a couple pieces of wood i had to uh, uh, rip in half um it's not necessary i could probably get away with 90 percent of my cutting with that uh craftsman the 450 rancher and my 610 as my big saw because it'll pull a 24 and i can cut almost 40 inch wood with that with the 24 you know walking all the way around it considerably better than i can do with like that craftsman where that 20 inch bar is about all i would put on that um i will say that uh my 61 is going to get some more use uh this year for sure just because i want to run it uh and this winter when i get bored my white top will come out uh, I got to do a bottom end in that saw. It needs freshened up. It's been in my family for, uh, 15, 17 year range. And for a solid six or seven years of that, it was my dad and I's primary firewood saw. We were both running it pretty hard. And my... 61 blacktop that's why i bought that was because my dad had that white top and uh, i really liked it i still really like 61 ranchers they're like the uh original what i would call original 590 echo um they're nothing special they got enough power to get most firewood cutting done um it does lack a bit in power compared to my 610. My 610, I know, has more power than my 61. Um, it weighs more for sure. Uh, but the anti-vibe's better than the 610. But my 61 was my first chainsaw, so there's sentimental value there. Um, I got to order a clutch side cover for it. I haven't decided whether I'm going to try and get a... Uh, a new OEM cover with the plastic flag or whether I'm going to try and find another metal flag clutch side cover that's in better shape than mine. Uh, as much as I want for those freaking metal clutch covers, I'll probably just order a plastic flag, the new style one that they still sell from Husqvarna. I'm not going to bother with aftermarket. Um, I've tried a 200 series aftermarket recoil. This has been uh, almost 10 years ago now, and it was garbage. Uh, it would start the saw about half the time, and it was really annoying. Is you would go to pull it, and it would either catch or you would bottom the rope out trying to drop start it, you know. Which was super annoying to me, so I found a new not new but very much newer oem recoil than my original one i had and uh put that on it another thing uh the last weekend not yesterday but a week ago yesterday dad called me because a tip blew out in his 32 inch bar and uh i had to go take the 395 out i would have taken the 298 but it wasn't done yet i just did that yesterday before i went cutting uh took it out with a 36 and did a little bit of cutting and that was fun to get that back out um you know it's one of them things where 
every once in a while it's fun to get those out and then you run them for two or three hours and you're like yeah i know why i don't why i don't get this off the truck unless i need it you know that that weight factor is definitely there because i got the 36 on it because he said it was a big piece of maple and uh i could have got away with the 32 but he told me to go ahead and bring the 36 so i sharpened it before i left and uh put that bar on but I'll probably put the 36 on the 298 uh, at some point and take it down to where I've been cutting south of the house, 20, 30 minutes-ish. Because uh, there's a lot of big oaks down there to cut. And uh, I'm going to go have some fun down there. I'm contemplating either buying another 36-inch bar or buying a 42-inch bar for this 298 because uh, a it's freaking heavy so if i'm running it the weight isn't really as much of a factor it's more i need the power like it's it's not that far off in weight from the 395 but when you're already carrying 15 pounds plus every freaking ounce matters um, unless you need the power like if i'm cutting six foot wood that 298 is what i'm going to be using uh, because it has the the canaches the 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 grunt the torque to do it not that that 395 doesn't because i've cut six and a half foot cottonwood with that fricker before uh, thankfully it was hollow but I was cutting with my 36 and walked all the way around it and I still had a post in the middle that we had to break off even with the hollow spot um, that's where a 42 inch bar would be nice on that 298 because there has been instances about once or twice a year where I would like a little bit longer bar than a 36 and the 395 not that it can't run a longer bar than that but you're gonna start running into oiling problems longer than a 36 and um, you could potentially uh, blow them out and if I'm running that long of a bar on this 298 the other sides anti vibe mounts are gonna have to be replaced because when I put it back together, I had to do all of the starter side anti-vibe mounts. There's three, six total, three on each side. And the clutch side mounts were all a little softer than I would like. So if I'm going to run longer than a 36, I'm going to have to order these other parts. Which, by the way, if you guys have a metal tank Husqvarna 200 series, like a 161 or one. Uh, 298, uh, 2100, anything like that. Any vib vibration mounts are still available OEM. The part number is 501-269-705. I got these off of Parts Tree. They were a little expensive. I'll flip you around and show you the part. As I said, 501-269-705. And I ordered three OEM mounts. And after shipping, they were $83.31. Or $23 a mount before shipping. They're a little expensive, but I don't think there's any aftermarket for the metal tanks. Because they're a fine thread instead of the coarse thread like uh all of the uh plastic tank 200 series from the 61 practica all the way through the uh 288 272 um 
I don't remember what the part number is. I've got a couple extra around here somewhere. I don't remember where they are, but um, those I would probably try and stick with OEM uh, just because they're the, the coarse shred ones aren't that expensive. They're only like $6 a piece. And uh, I've had really good luck with OEM. I just put a set of mounts in my 61 my black top and my uh, white top I think got some last year or still needs a couple I don't remember which it's been so long since I've actually ran that saw um, because the last time I ran that saw it had an air leak on the clutch side probably from the seal just because uh, that saw was made in 1983 so uh, it's well due for a bottom end and it's going to get uh, bearings and seals and if it needs a crank it's getting a crank and a clutch um, because I know the clutch is questionable in that saw and uh, if I'm going to do the bearings I might as well do the clutch but I have to do the crank to update the clutch to the newer style clutch because um, it's got a single spring clutch in it and there's nothing really wrong with it um, it's just if I'm already going to be doing a clutch or a crank I'm going to order the clutch for a 272 and put a 272 crank in it or a 268 or a late model 266 XP they all run the three spring clutch instead of the single spring um, the single springs, the springs are getting harder to find, not that you can't find them. And they're also a little expensive, and they're hard to do. They're a pain in the butt. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Uh, if one of you guys decides you want a decent little saw for not a lot of money, uh, I am going to be selling this Craftsman 5.4. I'm not going to be doing shipping. That's just a lot of hassle. Uh, it does need a few things. It needs the air filter replaced. Um, I just haven't done it. I wanted to make sure it was a solid saw before I messed with replacing much more parts than what I did. And the recoil cup is a plastic cup with... Uh, six catches for the starter dogs it's missing a few of them but the saw still starts it's just when it gets to that spot the rope skips over till it gets to the good spot and then catches and rolls the saw over it runs phenomenally well it takes a tune just fine now that i've got a couple tanks on it because you know i probably sat dry for 10 years at least um the spark plug boot, if a guy gets real finicky, could need replaced. Uh, it's kind of dry rotted. I didn't bother with it. I just tossed a new plug in it and put new fuel lines in it and a new filter. I put a Husqvarna uh, 200 series style fuel filter in it. That's just what I have. I keep a couple of them on hand. And I put a uh, Echo fuel line in it. I think the part number is 900. 014 um it's a really good fuel line i've had good luck with it uh the the duckbill valve in the tank had been replaced before so i left it alone it wasn't leaking um but if one of you guys lives in southern iowa and decides you want a craftsman 5.4 that's a good runner that needs an air filter and if you're picky a recoil cup and a spark plug boot uh reach out i'd be willing to sell it for not a whole lot probably you know 150 or if i replace the other parts 200 bucks uh as long as that extra 50 dollars doesn't exceed the cost of parts i haven't bothered to research the parts but uh that's all i got for today guys um thanks for watching i am trying to get uh more cutting videos made uh i'm gonna be ordering a tripod i know i keep saying that but 
I am actually ordering a tripod either this week or end of this week. So it's just a matter of time before I get one and then I can do cutting videos again. Um, I would really like to get a head-to-head -head comparison between this 298 and my 395. Um, and when I get my uh, 266 SE back out, I'm going to do a comparison with a 24-inch bar as fair as I can make it between the 610 and the 266. And I'm going to throw the 61 in there as a baseline with a 20 inch bar. Um, just because pretty much everyone knows how 61 ranchers cut. Uh, if you don't buy one, they're a really nice, dependable firewood saw. That saw hasn't been started in months, and I'm going to go grab it, and I bet you that sucker will fire right up. Be right back. Make sure there's some fuel in it. If not, I'm going to toss just a splat of fuel in there. Just enough to get it to fire and run for a minute. So this is a really excellent saw. I really should get this thing out and run it more. But as I said, this thing has not been started in months. side cover this weekend for that anyway that's all for today folks thanks for watching if you guys have a topic you want me to cover let me know that's all for now bye